Okay, good friends. So after the third trip to the auction, we finally succeeded in find, finding something we can make money on. Uh, I'm not sure if I can double my money on this one, um, pretty much like I did the last one. But in, in this climate, in, in this day and age, in the atmosphere that we're in now, uh, it's more difficult. Uh, I've done this before. It was a lot easier. Um, since the, uh, the 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 pandemic um, prices have skyrocketed for used vehicles, so uh, the auctions that we're starting at um, they are being filtered cars from used car lots, and they weren't the best cars to begin with. And now that uh, car lots are seeking more vehicles for uh, inventory, they're holding on to a lot more of the selection that we used to have. So the pickings are slim, to say the least. And it took three trips uh, this time to finally find something that um, the uh, the reserve or the buyback was met, which means if you go to an auction and you're presenting something to sell, you can put in a reserve bid. And if the bid in the crowd does not meet that, you get the vehicle back. And the last two times I went, uh, I had a limit. I do not go above that. Um, I'm just uh, sticking to the guidelines. And um, I bid on at least eight, nine, uh, 10 cars and did not even meet the reserve. So finally we found the vehicle where the reserve was off. Um, this one here has uh, high mileage like the last one, but about 15,000 miles less than the, the first vehicle that we flipped, uh, the Jeep. Um, there was a check engine light on and I scanned it and it came up a, uh, a cam timing sensor, which is just a small plastic piece that plugs into the block right behind the water pump. I'm familiar with those. Uh, some have come out easy. Some have really given me uh, a, a huge problem and have broken pulling, the, pulling them out, but it's no big deal. Uh, but to tell you the truth, on the way back after I filled it up and it was over $100 to fill it, so we're $100 in so far, uh, the check engine light went off. So we really have... Um, we have no lights on the dash lighting up like a Christmas tree. I'm going to replace that sensor anyway because it could be a sign it's it's going bad. So we do have something. It's going to be um, a, a vehicle I can present to a niche crowd. This is a larger SUV, but the towing package is pristine. Uh, it's in really good shape. No leaks. Uh, just needs a tune up. Um, and we'll, we'll find that niche person that wants a large SUV that can hold a crowd as they're taking their boat to the lake or to the ocean or hauling a trailer uh, or RV. So um, let's do a walk around. I'll show you what we picked up. This is what we ended up with. One of the few vehicles where bidding actually met the reserve and they let the vehicle go. And this one we can make some profit on. It's an 07 Cadillac Escalade. It's rather straight. It does have some uh, dings here and there throughout the panels, but no rust. Paint is in decent condition. Factory 20s, uh, pearl white. It runs good and uh, air conditioning is ice cold and we're off to a good start here so we'll put a little tlc into it as you've noticed this is in much better shape than the last one uh, the jeep uh, the first one that we picked up so a lot less work to do Let's get to costs. We had to use all of the 6500 that we made from the Jeep, and that included the auction fees. The interior here is in decent shape. Uh, no rips or cracks or tears, but the leather does need to be re-dyed in areas. So at some point, we will clean up the leather and prep it for uh, a little bit of refurbishment. Picking up a vehicle from an auction, you're guaranteed to get an empty tank. And to, in today's environment, you're going to have a drop or two to get it to the gas station. So we already have 100 into it in fuel because the shop manager wants a ride before she gives her nod of approval. This thing has the 6.2 liter uh, Vortec. It uh, does drink a lot of fuel. You can practically watch the gas gauge going down. But this will be targeted towards uh, a small niche and uh, we'll have no problem selling it. We will tune it up. It has not been touched in quite some time. Uh, we do have that cam sensor in front behind the water pump. It can be reached from either up top or down below. We'll address that in a bit. 
By the way, that cam sensor and uh, giving it a good tune-up is huge when it comes to uh, fuel economy, which will help sell it. It will increase the economy because all of those uh, mentioned above, uh, they feed data to the vehicle's ECU, and that controls um, you know, how much fuel enters the, the combustion chamber and then the ignition that sparks that fuel. And if everything is running properly, uh, you have an efficient running vehicle. The oil is nice and clean. As you can see here, it's a good sign. There's no white froth. There's no uh, oil burnt to the stick from high mileage. This does have high mileage. So, so far so good. We pull the cap to look for that white froth underneath there. That is an indication we could have a problem with a head gasket if we find that type of moisture in the oil system. One of the things we look for at the auction, uh, we slide underneath to see if it's dry. If we have a ton of oil or transmission fluid or even uh, coolant leaking, we try to stay away from them. It's dry all the way back through the cross members, the transfer case, transmission, and beyond. So it's solid under here, not a ton of rust. We have a great foundation. Some things to take note, up front there, there's a drip or two that's coming from the power steering reservoir, no big deal, and pump. We can address that if needed. Uh, we did notice a brand new condenser for the air conditioner. That's going to be huge uh, as the summer months approach. If somebody's picking this up to haul an RV or a boat, they can stay nice and cool. Uh, check under done lights. Uh, it's not lit up here on the dash like a Christmas tree. Just a few things to look at. Um, the low air pressure sensor, we just pump that up and that will be gone. I will drive it for the next 50 miles or so to make sure nothing comes back back because sometimes when they drop these cars off at the dealership they will reset the check engine light very sneaky but it happens we pump up the tires that indicator is gone and we're in good shape the xm is actually still activated and we have good tunes going good tunes for the pdr guy things are coming together already a little bit out of uh rotation compared to the way i do them but when we have time to do things we get them done so the pdr guy is hard at work uh removing all of those little dents and dings These are the types of dings that we're going after. And the, the paintless dent repair guys, they are true artists when it comes to moving metal without cracking the paint that's on top of them. It's absolutely amazing what they can do. And you can see after he's done, you don't know uh, that that ding or dent has even been there. It's completely gone and looks fantastic. Normally, PDR is done after the wash and decon and before the paint correction, but the shop manager is raring to go for another ride, so here we go. Another thing that we did a little bit out of sequence, we uh, started to dye the seats. As I mentioned before, there are some areas where it's rubbed through uh, into the bare leather. Not a lot of repair to be done, no tears or rips just a re-dye, a simple re-dye, and it absolutely looks fantastic and is nice and fresh up in the driver's cabin. Of course, you don't just re-dye dirty seats, so let me show you the process of getting these clean, what I like to use, Angel Wax Heaven for Leather. The work stuff uh, soft detailing brushes first. I mean, those are great for maintenance cleanings. And for that, you can just spray the cleaner directly onto the leather itself, a little bit into the brush, and it lathers up. Real, it's real uh, nice, uh, effective, and satisfying leather cleaner to use.
great for light cleaning or maintenance, but just not quite enough for these dirty seats. So we'll reach for the star scrubber. So there's two effective ways you can freshen up your leather with the detailing brush and angel wax or team it up with the star scrubber. There are areas like this uh, that have to be redyed. So we're going to move to the other side to freshen that up and it's all ready to be refinished, retopped, resurfaced. This little foam scrubber here with the short nap fibers can be found in many shapes and sizes on Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a link for all this stuff down in the description box. And those short fibers, uh, they're soft enough to be safe on leather, but stiff enough to get into uh, the creases and valleys of textured leather and also plastic. Just continue that process uh, for the rest of the seat, the surface area of the seat, and it's time for the dyeing process. I'm going to capture some footage uh, on that for the next video. We're going to be all over the place as it's really, this is the busiest time of the season at the shop here, so we're going to get things done if and when we can when it comes to this Cadillac. Okay, so I'm going to drive this back and forth to work for a week or so without piling a ton of mileage on it, but I want to make sure that uh, uh, these dash lights and the check engine light stays off. We will be replacing uh, that cam timing sensor. Uh, we'll keep track of fuel mileage. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be 12 to 18, uh, normal for something this size. Uh, but like I said, I will be targeting this towards a niche, and I, should, uh, I shouldn't I should have a problem selling it uh, for profit. Um, all right, so we'll keep you um, up to date with everything we're doing to this, and let's uh, get this out on the road. By the way, this will look darn good in somebody's driveway. And if you have a furry little friend like we do here, you can see by the wagging tail, she's happy with it so far as well. This has been Brian from Apex Detail. I hope you are enjoying the series so far, and we'll catch you in the next video. I truly appreciate each and every one of you.